the doctor was called. And that's kind of normal because, you know, the doctor's sort of at their beck and call because he's the most important person around or the richest person around and has, you know, money and so can afford to pay the doctor very well as opposed to the other people who may not necessarily be able to pay and the doctor has to eat just like everybody else does. So the doctor was expecting to be there and sit with Colin and to calm him down and to sort of do something to make it look like he actually did something. Um, but Colin being tired and worn out and still emotionally frayed is a very normal thing. Um, when I get emotional and break down and just don't feel right and don't feel well and get angry or sad or, you know, really feel emotions and it can continue on to the next day where the next day I'm more likely to break down. I'm more likely to get sad or angry. And so that's the same thing that happens with Colin. He gets into these rages and tempers and gets sad and it just breaks him down. And the next day he hasn't completely built up his mind yet. He hasn't put all of the pieces back together. He hasn't you know, he hasn't gotten things fixed so he can function as normally as he ever did. But, and so he's in a more breakable place. And so the doctor expected to come and keep him calm and perhaps treat him with various medicines, which back then were fairly primitive, but at the same time, they could be effective. Um, so the doctor expected to come and have to treat Colin. And he showed up, and Colin's right as roses. He has the window open, and everybody's happy that he has the window open. The nurse would sit up there in the room in the stifling heat and just have to, like, deal with it because Colin was deathly afraid of having the window open, figuring he'd catch a cold. Now, because Colin was so small and sickly, he was thin. He didn't have much muscle. He could barely walk. You know, he could take a few steps. He could barely sit up. Because he had so little muscle, he doesn't have a lot of heat production. And so old people and sick people and frail people are much more likely to get cold. So I have a good amount of muscle on me. I have a good amount of body fat. Um, the body fat isn't really healthy, but the muscle and all of that means that I put out a lot of heat, which means that I don't feel the cold as much. So I can walk around in, there are places where people who are thinner and not as muscled, they're like, aren't you cold? It's like, no, I'm not cold because I put out this heat. The problem is, is that Colin doesn't put out the heat. So he is more likely to be cold. And so the nurse, you know, so you have Colin who just lies in bed going, oh, he expends no energy. He expends almost no energy. And because he expends no almost no energy, he puts out no almost no heat. But here you have the nurse. She's in the same room, and she's walking around. She's going, fetching this for Colin, and fetching that for Colin, and getting up as checking his vitals, and doing this, and doing that, and going in and out, and in and out, and just all of these different things that she's moving around. And as you move around, you build up heat. And so because the window is closed and the air is stifling and it's a warm day, she overheats. But there's nothing she can do about it because Colin wants it cold. Or Colin wants it warm. Sorry. Colin wants it warm. And so here he has the window open. The doc knows at some level that fresh air will help. The doctor knows that fresh air will help him. And the nurse is happy. And the doctor goes down. He's confused. And Mrs. Medlock is like, yeah. I'm confused, but I'm happy. This is this is all better. And um, the butler said that he would need a good hiding, which is kind of a mm, term that isn't expected, or we wouldn't necessarily think of in modern society. Now, hide is a term that means skin. So you have the hide of an animal or the skin of the animal. And hiding is not like taking someone, or hiding in this case is not taking someone or something 
and putting it in a secret location, in a hidden location. Hiding is short for tanning their hide, which is a euphemism for beating. Because, you know, if someone, if there's a slap on the skin, you know, if you smack the back of your hand like that, you'll get a red spot. And so if children were beaten or struck or spanked, their skin would go red because the blood flows into it to try and repair the damage that was done. And so in older societies, people beat their children a lot, which is really bad for a whole bunch of reasons. And um, it was really bad. But the thing is, is that the skin would go red. So it was kind of tanning it. And so instead of tanning their hide, it was hiding them. So that's just a way that the word got shortened. Um, so the butler was like, yeah, the kid needs a good spanking, which maybe at least an attitude readjustment. And I mean, Mary did that just by yelling at him and he forcefully explaining things. So she did it without physically harming him, which is a good thing. And he took the message. And here you have Dickon coming in. And everybody knows Dickon because, you know, Dickon lives on the moor. Dickon is almost this elemental ghost of the moor that everybody knows about. And now he has a lamb, which is just like the perfect, perfect thing for Colin. Because here you have this lamb, which is unfed or underfed. And it doesn't generate the warmth. As I said, you know, you got to put on muscle and generate the warmth. Problem is, is that the lamb has to be kept alive inside of the mother. mother. And running muscle takes a lot of oxygen, but you can only have so much oxygen because you have two beings with one set of lungs that work. So the lamb doesn't have much muscle. It doesn't have much of anything beyond skin and bone and just barely enough to move around. So it needs the warmth. Colin doesn't have much warmth and he needs the warmth. So he has this big fluffy coat on velvet and so the lamb is all snuggling up next to him and so this is a perfect thing because the lamb doesn't have much energy colin doesn't have much energy and the two of them can get healthy together so that's going to be a wonderful thing and uh i mentioned this before in previous chapters how colin or dickon was talking to the crow soot talking to soot and so it would call back, but as I've mentioned before, crows have been known to imitate human speech, which is just downright awesome. Uh, corvids, which are the crow family, are like some of the smartest things on the planet. You have like people and dolphins and crows, which is astonishing because of how small they are. It's like they're all brain almost, but uh, crows are like right up there. Uh, they've done tests, and there are some logic problems that crows solve that monkeys are just like, no, monkeys refuse to play. And um, Actually, the particular tasks that crows are successful at, but monkeys fail at. So you have the crow in a cage, or the monkey in a cage, or the person in the cage. Doesn't matter. But you have the subject in the cage, and you have a little stick, and a big stick, and food. Now, they can't reach the big stick, because the big stick is just out of reach. But the little stick's in reach, and the food is way out of reach. So, the monkey reaches for the food and can't get to the food. The monkey reaches for the big stick. Kick the big stick. Monkey reaches for the little stick, grabs the little stick, and starts reaching for the food with the little stick. He reaches for the food with the little stick. And they can't reach the food with a little stick. Eventually, the monkey just gives up and starts begging on the bars and throwing things. Now, the crow. Same setup, different size cage. Reaches for the food. No. Nah. Reaches for the big stick. No. Nah. Reaches for the little stick. Grabs a little stick. Uses a little stick for each for the food. No. Nah. Uses a little stick to reach for the big stick. Uses a little stick. Takes... Pulls the big stick, puts down the little stick, picks up the big stick, takes the big stick and reaches for the food. Now, crows can do this. Children 
of a certain age can do this. There's there's sort of like a cutoff. Monkeys just like nah. Dolphins have passed this test as well. Um, sometimes dolphins are hit or miss. Crows, I think, were like seventy five percent. Humans, um, I can't remember what the age cutoff is. Like seven or eight maybe five, start to be able to do this. Uh, there's another one that involved cooperation that, once again, the monkeys just failed at. Uh, humans are like, oh, yeah, this it, it works it. And crows get it, too. So crows are smart. I, just, I, I love crows. I mean, they're just so clever. So awesome. Um, and... They almost let the secret of the garden slip because they were talking about it when the doctor came in. And they've been talking about this and whether or not some adults is going to put two and two together about the garden that they're talking about and planning being the secret hidden garden or just some stray patch of dirt on the estate grounds. I guess we'll find that out.